What's going on, you guys? Uh, it's your boy, Three Stacks in this thing, baby. And um, I just recently did my Herald of Perfection deck profile. For uh, people that I've asked, and I've got a lot of requests on it, I'm going to do test hands for the build that I'm tweaking around with right now. Uh, you know it's real when you just keep changing your deck and you've went through 111 builds and you finally, on the 111th, you're like, okay, this is the one, this is the one. This is not necessarily the best Herald build because I can't really say that because all of them are incredible and I don't know which one's the best, but this is the one that I would say probably has the highest competitive application for this current format. There were other Herald builds that were way more competitive than this one is, but that was because of the format that I made that deck in. Like I did certain variations, like the Ties of the Brethren one was just so good around Zodiac format because the whole format, let's just, let's be realistic. It was all just Zodiacs. Like it was Zodiacs, Zoo, everything, Metal Foe Zoos, uh, Infernoid Zoos, 60 card, you know, dot decks. And it's just like hardly anybody was summoning lights. So the various statue was just crazy. Um, so like that, that was one of the most competitive variants and like that would still thrive this format because not very many people are playing decks that rely on special summoning light monsters. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and see how crazy these test hands are going to get with this 52 card deck. Power shuffled. And I want to be sure that I don't draw three of anything that has the same name. Because like I said, I just did my deck profile. So I know that all of my cards that have the same name are next to each other because of the presentation of how you do a deck profile. You keep everything right next, like all three modules are next to each other. So you get the gist of why I have to shuffle so much to make sure that I don't have that problem. Because I don't want the test hand to be like, okay, three Manjus and then like two Herald and that's no, no. So let's see what happens. Princess Katana, Egg, Pre-Prep, Extra Foolish Burial, and Las Vegas. So this is test hand number one. Luckily, I can make Herald before my normal summon. When you can make Herald before your normal summon, it just really, it solves a lot of problems. So let's pre-prep. Let's grab, uh, let's go for the juice and the berries. Let's go ahead and go activate extra foolish barrel. And let's dump. And if you feel like you really need to play around hand traps if your opponent didn't stop pre-prep. And even if they did stop pre-prep, you actually could still make Herald with this hand. You probably would then have to normal the egg to get the extra spell that you need to discard for Saint. Or you could just get the Machine Angel Ritual one. And then you could draw two and you'll still get your combo pieces. But uh, basically, you would make Herald first. But for, since this is a test hand, I'm just going to play it out as if I'm being uninterrupted. So I'll grab the Dawn. And the reason why I'm grabbing the Dawn is because I'm about to search out Stick Chair. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to have to uh, summon Herald twice. Wait a minute. I still... I can't do... No, 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 no. Yeah, I can, but I have to do something weird. I'm going to do something weird. So we're going to summon him once. We're going to banish this. We're going to add her back. We're going to search him out. Another copy of him. That's what I was missing. Okay, and then we're going to activate uh, Dawn. And what we'll do... Oh, no, we're going to activate uh, Sank, and we're going to discard the Dawn to search another copy of Dawn. I, I see the play that I'm making now. This is going to be cool. It's weird. Like, when you just when you play a deck so long, you can do virtually anything with any hand. So I'm going to force a stick chair to happen with a really weird hand. So next up, I'm going to activate Dawn. I'm going to tribute Princess Katana. Hiya! Summon Herald in column number two. So this is column number two. That's column number five. I'm going to let Dawn hit the grave. And I'm going to search out Scepter. Then I'm going to normal summon Scepter. Use his effect. And if you guys see what I'm doing, if you play Heralds, you can already see what I set up my, my grave for. Ritual Sanctuary is nuts. S search out Sovereignty, then shuffle these four spells back. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't shuffle them back yet. I actually do this play. I link those two, <clears throat> and I go into Hippo Shinogen. You'll see why I made him over any other link, because I'm going to get a plus off of popping him for the Stick Chair combo. Then I shuffle these four. And you guys can see with that hand, an average hero player, or not to say an average, but a hero player who just like just got into it and started playing, they'd just be like, oh, this is just, we could just summon two heralds and just sit on them. 
we can actually do the summon sorcerers combo that I was telling you guys about, which is gonna be crazy. So shuffle those special scepter back and then trigger his effect and chain sovereignty. You can chain block with sovereignty and scepter because this is if you know more special, you can summon this. It's the same concept with uh butter spy, it's the same concept with that Salaman Great Peacock thing. So you're gonna trigger sovereignty first and you're gonna draw. We drew prep, then you're gonna resolve scepter and you're gonna grab sovereignty. And so once you got that sovereignty, the window is still open for you to summon it. So you're just going to summon that sovereignty. You're going to get the draw. So you guys are kind of starting to understand why I love stick chair in my deck and why like I don't ever cut it and I don't ever play any other engines over it. So essentially the options you have here right now with the way things are set up is you can do summon sorceress or you can go for your Ouroboros. Pop that Hippo Shinigen. So I'll show you the two plays you can make. Then I'll go into the play that I would actually make. So you can do this right here. Summon Ouroboros, target this, and destroy it. You can draw a card and then trigger Hippo Shinigen to get bent in. So essentially, you know for sure that you're going to have three, neg four negates. Uh, you don't know what the card you drew is, which is Geldagra. But what I'm going to do, because I promised you guys I would, I'm going to show you guys the Summon Sorceress combo. So we're, we're going to do, we're going to make sure that these zones are lined up correctly. And we're going to keep that exactly how it is. We're going to take this Hippo Shinigen and this Sovereignty. What are they? Both fairies, right? So you take those and you go into Summon Sorceress. You then target Scepter. And so the other option, which makes it even more busted, is now you can bring out a Manju and you can make a Bist Dweller. Which is going to be more than sufficient for you to just stall your opponent out and bore sort them next turn. Um, but... Again, we're going for Evo, but it just shows you how flexible Stick Chair really is and the main reason why I just never, ever take it out of my deck. So we drop Eva. Its effects being negated doesn't actually matter for the simple fact that Eva has a graveyard effect that's relevant, and Summon Sorcerers does not deny the graveyard effect from resolving. So what we're going to do, because our resources are so adequate right now, like, I'll go prep again. Uh, I'll grab uh, Princess Katana. Hiya! And then, um, <laughs> actually, I'll grab my, my final Herald. Because you can actually do pre-prep to grab Herald from Grave, too. So, we'll keep the Katanas. Because they matter more to have in deck. Uh, so, now what we'll do is, we can actually make Boar Sword right now. So, making Boar Sword right now is crazy. There's a lot of things that you can do. Like, for example, we could uh, do some Cold Link action with Nightmares. And we can make Link Karibo. But I know for sure before I make Boro Sword, I want to make Link Karibo. Because I can bring this Eva back by shuffling this one spell. So that way I can basically have Eva as a monster that I can change to defense to do more damage with Boro Sword. So it's just crazy. Like there's so much you can do. So you tribute the Eva. Uh, well don't tribute. You Link for Link Karibo. Triggering Eva's graveyard effect. You're going to banish Hippo Shinigen. And you're going to banish Herald of the Arc Light from your grave. I'm sorry, you can only banish one because I hard drew one of my Eva targets. So I'll banish the Herald of the Arc Light. And then I'll search out my Cyber Petite Angel. So that's like the summon sword combo that I talk about. What's up, Connor? That um basically it's to trigger Eva. And now we'll go back. This test hand is really efficient. So now we'll go back to where we were because I was not cognizant of the fact that one of my Eva targets is actually in my hand. Which takes, it decreases the value of that play. I'm just showing you guys the Summon Sorceress combo like I promised. So now we can go back and we can go back to the play that gets me more value. Which is going to be the Stick Chair going into an XYZ. Where's our... So what we do here is we overlay these. And let's make sure we sh shuffle really good so that Eva doesn't get drawn. Because I think I put it on top of my deck. Oh, hey. uh, so we overlay these. And we go into Ouroboros. We trigger Scepter, which grants Ouroboros that effect. Target the Hippo Shinigen, Destroy it. Draw a card. We drew Celestial Observatory. That's nuts. Hippo Shinigen's Graveyard effect gives us Benton back to our hand. Then we use Ouroboros. We rip, we rip a card out of our opponent's hand. So now they're playing with five cards. And guess how many in the gates you already have? One, two, three, four. They're essentially playing with one card. But it's about to be over. Because Observatory is probably more than guaranteed going to give us either one or two fairies. So we're going to activate it. We're going to put him on the bottom of the deck. We're going to draw two cards. It's going to be two fairies. Yeah, that's game. Because now your opponent is playing with five cards in hand and you have 
five negations. You have five negations. It's crazy. <laughs> yep. So that's that test hand. I'm going to do another one. And now you guys see like why I maximize on getting to this card. Like I played three of it and I play the terraformings because Las Vegas is like one of the strongest spell. I would say it has the most, it, it provides something called residual. Like residual income is basically income that you can capitalize off of gradually over time. And that's exactly what Ritual Sanctuary is. It's advantage that you capitalize off of gradually over time. It keeps you in the grind game and it enables you to do more than what your deck is naturally able to do by itself. It's an extender. It's a definitive extender and it also is your combo pieces. So in this hand... Oh, this hand isn't bad. So we can go uh, Optimus Prime for our... Oh, I put <laughs> I put Oceanage in the extra uh, in the main deck. Uh, Optimus Prime for our Las Vegas. I'll probably engage first. Uh, we'll engage. We'll go for Hornet Drones. Then we'll activate Hornet Drones. We'll put the Sky Striker token there. And then we'll link it off. And we'll go into Kagari. Use Kagari to add Engage back. Then we'll go ahead and activate engage. We'll get our multi-roll from deck. You see how we're loading our grave with spells? Now Ritual Sanctuary is about to be crazy. Grab our multi-roll. And the cool thing is, right now we can do, like I'm going to show you guys that you can do this, but this is not what I'm actually going to do, is you can normal the scepter. You can grab the sovereignty. You can activate uh, Ritual Sanctuary. You can uh, use Multi-Roll. Uh, use Sanctuary, pitch this, get Foreign Grave, link with that and that to go to Reaper Dacus, and then bring this back and do the Stick Chair combo. So even if you didn't have your combo pieces for Herald, you'd have a chance of drawing into them. But anyways, we'll go back to how it really is. This is our hand. We're going to activate Sync, and we're going to discard the Multi-Roll to get the Ritual Spell for Herald, which is Dawn. And uh, it's game time because this is Herald's Stick Chair. And so we'll go activate Don, tribute her, summon him in call number five, and then chain link one Benton, chain link two Don, banish this, add her back, search for the chair, and that's the wombo combo. This is the most powerful combo essentially of the deck. It's stick chair. Normal scepter in column number one, chain link one, chain link two. Draw one card, it's prep, and then we go ahead and grab our sovereignty. And the Sovereignty can get Special Summon. And the reason why you can do that with Sovereignties is because it's an if effect. It's very hard to explain, but if you play Stick Chair, you know that this is a legal combo. Uh, so then we're going to draw off of this one. We do Extra Foolish. So I, I can see that this board's about to be bonkers right now. Uh, so I'm going to Extra Foolish Burial. I'm going to send Herald of the Arc Light. And Herald of the Arc Light is then going to search... What it's going to do is it's going to search for a Dawn. It's going to search for a Dawn of the Herald. And since we haven't drawn any of our Eva targets, now we can take the uh, Kagari and the Sovereignty and we can make Reproducus. Then use him and that turn into a dinosaur and then put Summon Sorceress over here. Use her to target Scepter. You guys see all the Wombo combos? Like, it's a ritual deck, but you have to give it the respect that it's able to do stuff like this. This is my favorite deck, man. Uh, so we're bringing out Eva. And we haven't used the graveyard effect of Ritual Sanctuary yet, which is going to basically act as another extender for us. Uh, so now what we're going to do is... Let me check my extra deck to make sure it's adequate. Oh, yeah, we're going to Tribute Eva to go for Link Karibo. Uh, link it off. I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep saying Tribute. Then we're going to banish the two Light Fairies from our grave for Eva's effect. And then we can go ahead and search out our Eva cards, which is going to be Petite and the Egg. So you get a plus one off of that. You go in plus one just to get a plus one to go into another plus one. That's how crazy it is. So our hand size is back to five, but it's actually going to get a lot bigger. 
And so now what we do, what we'll do here is we'll activate preparation of rights and grab the herald. Yeah, this is insane, you guys. Like this, I mean, like I'm not overreacting because this is what my deck does on a regular basis. Like nobody ever believes me except for the people that have dueled against this deck and have witnessed the devastation. Uh, but yeah, this is just like regular stuff for me. So like that's why I'm not overreacting. Uh, but if you're watching this video, you're probably in your chair like, Oh, that's broken! Uh, we'll activate Dawn. We'll, let me check my grave to make sure. And that's the awesome thing with Ritual Sanctuary is it allows me to modify my grave so that if I have one less fairy, I can put another one. And if I have one more, I can make sure... That, basically, I'm always going to make sure that I have exactly four because I'm about to go for Christia. I'm going in for the win. Uh, so we're going to tribute Benton. And this time, we're actually going to let her stay in the grave. We're going to let this uh, Dawn of the Herald resolve that way, summoning him here. And uh, we're going to resolve her effect, and we're going to search out Arc Lord Chrysia. We're going for the win this time. And this is, you only do reckless plays like this in uh, game one. Because games two and three, you can severely get punished by a spear mode. And we don't want that to happen. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to count our grave count the number of fairies in our grave so we have one two three we have three fairies in grave now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh take link karibo hey ivan yes and scepter and we're gonna make phoenix and then we're gonna use ritual sanctuary to put one i'm gonna put dom back because it's important uh we're gonna put engage back and its targets so we're going to put those four back. Uh, prep and all of those, we have extra copies of those. So we're going to target these four. And we're going to bring out Scepter and his effects not once per turn. So we're going to search out another copy of Sovereignty. And we have three fairies in Grave currently. So what we're going to do is we're going to make Borosaur turn one. We're going to tell our opponent, not only can they not play Yu-Gi-Oh, not only is this undeniably game, but I'm going to kill you anyway. So this board just says, scoop it up, go to game two. Because uh, now we have one, two, three, exactly four fairies in our grave. Drop our Chrissia. Use Chrissia's effect. Grab that scepter. So now we have you're four negations. And our opponent can't special summon. I don't think you're we have... recording. Yeah. I'm recording. It just says low battery. Oh. Uh, so basically, this is our board. We have double herald Chrissia and Borosword. If you don't think that that's good, I don't, I don't understand. So basically, I don't need a special summon anymore. I'm done special summon, and I already have game. So I can negate everything that they do, even though I don't need these four negates because they can't special summon. And I just go in for the kill next turn, and look what I top deck. Like, it's this is undeniably game. We can just activate that. We can grab this, and we can grab a Herald. Then we can discard this for the Sanctuary. And then we can grab a Benton. So we have two negations to make sure our battle phase is safe. But this is game. We just go attack, 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 effect. Changes to defense. They try to change something. Negate, negate. They're dead. Like, that's the perfect setup right there. That You guys can't say that that's not bonkers. Like, it, it, like nobody ever believes me, man. Like, everybody always think that I exaggerate when I talk about this deck. But, like, I really don't. So, I'm going to do another test hand. And this is probably going to be the last one. Uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be the last one for this. Because I, I just don't want this video to be super long. All right, so I'm going to power shuffle for this one to make sure that this hand is perfect. Because uh, this hand, I want to show you guys, I like. I really want the hand to work with me. I want to be able to get a multi-roll first before I do all my power spells. Because that's essentially the game plan. The way that hand was, I ended up having to use the multi-roll as fodder, which is not ideal. But if you saw my hand, it was the only way that it would work. The other way I could have allowed it to play out too was uh, using multi-roll to target Scepter and send it to the grave and then use Ritual Sanctuary to bring back Scepter and then do the stick chair combo and if you drew a spell off of that then you could discard it in search of Dawn. So that combo could have went another way but the thing was you had to put the luck of the draw on it to where you have to draw a spell which is not unlikely but it's just there's a chance that you might not and I don't want to put my turn on a gamble. Alright, so this is the final test hand. The first and the second one were bonkers. Let's see if the third one is too. 
We do we do we drew two copies of the same card, so that kind of sucks. We drew two Sanctuary and two Sovereignty in a 50 card deck, but we can still make it work. So we'll prep for our Benton. And we'll go activate Sank, pitch Sank, and we'll use Sank and we'll go ahead and as a matter of fact, let's not search anything yet. Let's keep it how it is. And we're actually going to do something really weird. We're going to put it on the luck of the draw. We're going to normal sovereignty. Reveal this. And this has never happened. I don't know why this is happening on video. Uh, we drew Herald. Look at that. God is good. Activate this. Discard this. So we've, we made a weird hand work. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, so now we've got Herald up. We're going to summon him. Uh, banish that and add this back. And we're going to get Eva now. Because we're on low resources and Eva's going to help us with that. And then we'll link these two up into a Hippo Shinigen. And now we're going to have Hippo Shinigen with the Herald. And we have essentially four negations. So you go discard Eva to negate, effective Eva and Grave, banish those two, search two more. And then you have four negations. Yes. Yeah, so you have four negations off of two cards with that weird hand. It's like every, every hand is... <laughs> like... <laughs> Every hand's gonna make Herald, um, but what I'm used to is my hands being just super explosive and my turns being ridiculously long. That's what I'm used to. And I'm also used to being able to go for the kill very quickly. Uh, I'm gonna do one more just for the, oh, okay. Oh. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more just because that last one wasn't that great, but this one is perfect actually. Uh, engage. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna engage for multi roll. Uh, engage. Go for Hornet drones. Activate Hornet drones. Get the token. Get Kagari. Use Kagari to add back engage. Multi-roll away Kagari. Activate extra foolish burial goods. And we'll dump Herald of the Arc Light. Herald of the Arc Light is going to search our ritual spell. Add Dawn of the Herald. And then we're going to activate engage. Oh, wait, no, we're out of targets. We're out of targets, so we're not activating engage. Sorry, I was trying to get greedy. Yeah. So we're going to activate Dawn. Yes, Mommy. Tribute this, summon him. Oh, so you know what? Essentially, what we should have done was just added back the Horner drones, but it's okay, it's okay. It'll work, because what we need right now is we just need Harold established. Tribute her, summon him, bench this at her back. And then search for Eva, which helps for your low resource games. And, uh, oh, that's what we could have done. Okay, so what we could have done was, uh, hey, yeah, because we activated multi roll and then we did, yeah, so we have counters on multi roll so we can technically there. set off of multi roll we'll which, oh, yeah, we're going to search Eva. That's what I was searching. Uh, so where's Eva at? Oh, oh, and that's something else that's really cool. We could have uh, got the Hornet Drones back, made the token. And if we were really that desperate, we could have just got Eva and Tribute Summon for Eva, Tributing Herald and the token, which is not ideal. I wouldn't do that. You know what? I'm feeling it. Uh, we're 23 minutes in. I'm feeling it. I'm going to do another one. That was pretty nuts. Double engage? Man, that's 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 good. Uh, but, like, I'm starting to realize now what I need to change is play one more engaged target. Because that instance engage would have not only got me another card, but I also would have drawn because I had three spells engraved. So I'm starting to realize maybe I should play more than just two engaged targets from my deck. So that, that hand taught me something. And this has to be refined for Houston Regional. So I still have 12 days essentially to perfect this list. Alright, that's a hand. That's that's a good hand. Uh, let's go extra foolish burial. Send out of the arc light. And let's grab Dawn. Let's go ahead and activate Dawn. Let's summon the man, the myth, the legend. Banish that and add her back. And what we'll do is we'll search out Eva this time. Because 
this is not a stick chair combo hand, which is kind of sad. You can't be explosive. But what we can do is we can build up on our resources. So we're going to normal summon Cyber Egg Angel. And what we're going to essentially do by having Cyber Agent Egg Angel is we're going to be able to dig for more cards. We're going to grab this. And this also might be able to fix our hand if we need to like trade out cards for better ones. Like if we draw a pot of desires, that'd be nice. Activate this. Uh, we'll tribute her for cost to draw one and two. What did, wow. I used, you guys saw me shuffling. And then we're gonna put obviously the Merciful back on the bottom of our deck. Resolve Benton. And since we're getting ready to banish, I suppose what I should do is grab my Eva target, but I'm gonna leave it to the, the luck of uh, Desires. But what I will definitely do is just get Christia. I just want her out of my deck so that I don't lose her. So like, even if I have to discard her for cost in the gate, I'll do it. But if I don't end up having to, and I'm able to set up for Christia to drop her next turn, I will do it. Uh, Cause Harold is really effective at simplifying the game state. And when the game state is simplified and you drop a Vanity's emptiness on leg, oftentimes your opponent's just gonna <laughs> spill their guts. Uh, so now we're going to go for a pot. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we draw any Sky Striker cards, it's not going to help us. But what we did do is... we drew. Is this 6 negates? Is the Eva target banished? Yeah, it's 6 negates. Uh, how is this 6 negates? Because we have 5 fairies in hand. One of which is Eva, who still has a valid target. So that's game. <clears throat> Our opponent, especially if they're Sky Strikers, they can't... There's no way around it. Sky Sharkers cannot sacrifice six cards from their hand and have a miracle one card comeback with no cards. Uh, do you know what? Screw it. I know I said it was going to be the last one multiple times, but now I'm going to do another one because these are just, these are getting really good, man. These are just showing you that even the most simple boards, even the most awkward, uh, seemingly bricky hands, I've been making them all work. So, let's see what this one does. This one looks weird. But also, this one too, we can make it work. Don't do that, Connor, please. Uh, so, let's go ahead and activate Extra Flush Barrel. This one is going to be on the luck of the draw. This one's going to be a weird one. We're going to send Herald to the Arc Light. We're going to search out a Herald. And then we're going to use Celestial Observatory. But this hand is fragile to the point where a single Ash Blossom would stop it. This is why Multi-Roll is imperative for me. Uh, but we're going to activate Celestial. We're going to send him on the bottom. And we're going to draw one and two. So now we've kind of... We've got options. We can we can make this work. So we'll go Ritual Sanctuary. Ritual Sanctuary is going to go ahead and discard Dawn of the Herald for cost. And we're going to search out Benton. Because now we're doing essentially what we did in, in the first place. Which is digging for cards that enable us to dig for more cards. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and normal summon Cyber Egg. And we're going to search out our Merciful Machine Angel ritual. Our Merciful Machine Angel. And so now we're going to activate that. We're going to tribute Benton. Uh, let me get a good cuff, shuffle and cut. We're going to put Christia back for sure. Because we drew that in our opening hand. That kind of sucked. But let's see what we draw. Those two. We're going to put Christia back on the bottom. And then we're going to resolve Benton on a separate chain link. And dang, we keep drawing Cyber Egg. That's weird. Uh, let's go ahead and grab Scepter. So we have Scepter established. We're going to activate Prep. We're going to grab Harold. Oh, this hand just got good. This hand just got super duper good. Oh, yeah, this hand just got really, really good. Uh, we're going to grab Dawn back from the graveyard. Okay, this is crazy. This is crazy. I just got really excited right now because this hand just actually got like, okay. So we're going to activate Dawn of the Herald. We're going to tribute the egg. We're going to tribute the scepter. We're going to summon Herald. Uh, we're going to, let me check my grave. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're going to banish Dawn and we're going to go ahead and add egg back. And then we can... Oh, dude, I got super excited. All right. Then we can shuffle back four. Bring this back. Special this. Chain this effect. Bro, we literally turn a horrible hand into this madness. Wow. Like, we just kept digging for gold and we got there. That's 
That's insane. Oh, That's insane, Connor. dude. Like we just we just kept digging and, and it got it, it really got us there. All right, so now we're gonna draw off of the sovereignty and then grab another sovereignty and just go in, go all the way in. Connor, come here. Reveal this, special it, draw, and summon sork would be up next. What should we do? We can summon sort for Eva Connor. to get another guaranteed fairy, or we can play it by luck and just pop this in draw and see where it gets us. But I don't want to play by luck, so we'll take all three of these. We'll do summon sort. Summon sort, target that. Uh, so we're going to go Eva Link Karibo. That's going to be searched out either way. Uh, we bring out Eva, turn into Link Karibo, banish one of the sovereignties, or banish the Herald of Arc Light. We banish that. We grab this to our hand. Yeah, that's that's really really good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I just caught myself. I couldn't even do that because I forgot about the bottom part of a uh, Machine Angel ritual. You can only ritual summon for the rest of the turn. So even though that just got insane, I couldn't even technically do that. That that really sucks. Um, but you know what? Yeah, that's going to be it, you guys. No more test hands. Uh, I apologize for that last one. I caught myself. I guess I got really excited the second that I drew into essentially a really awkward but cool way to go in the stick chair. You guys saw that. Like, you guys saw how cool that was. But uh, nonetheless, I couldn't do it because I resolved the machine angel ritual. And I just reminded myself right now of its stipulation. Even though we're going to see 15 comments literally telling me exactly what I just said. Uh, yeah, I caught myself before anybody else does, and that's better. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. You guys stay positive, all right? Peace out, yo.